YouTubers. Welcome to uh, another installment of the Museum of Traffic Control on uh, various devices and signals we have here at the museum. Uh, today we're in the back shop area of the museum and uh, have been working on an electromechanical cabinet here. This particular one is an Econolite. Uh, it has the embossed lettering on the front of it. And uh, these served the country for many years, different uh, locations. It's a pre-time controller, which means uh, you set the timing and let it go, so to speak. It just runs back and forth until uh, the time clock kicks in, which is usually mounted on the door to put it in the night flash, which was a flashing red or flashing yellow red. Uh, these were served very well from the early 30s, 40s, all the way to the uh, almost the present day. Uh, many of these now have been retired. But what I'd like to do is uh, show you the inside and what makes this guy work. So let's open it up and show you the guts. All right, so in opening up the door here, this will show you what's, uh, what's inside these controllers. At the top, we have the dial motors. On the most simplest of these, there was usually just one. On the Econolite controller, it was located in the middle. On the Eagle and some of the others, it was located on the left side. This would be the default timer, the one that was run uh, when none of the other ones were engaged. Uh, for a, a typical isolated intersection, there would be this single dial. Uh, it could be set with the gears inside, which I can show you here in a little bit, to different gear ratios. And depending on the gear ratio, uh, it would uh, give you the timing. Okay, here's a close-up of the dial. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not. I'll come in a little bit closer, but typically right here in this little window would show you what it's set up for, which in this case was a 60-second cycle. And the, uh, the dial goes around. It has different keys located here. And the keys cause uh, the intervals to change. By the time a, a contact is made, I'll pull this drawer out here. Get this out of the way. All right, there we go. Every time a contact is made, I'll cause this magnet to engage which pulls this ratchet up and down, you know, uh, engages and releases. And that causes these little, uh, on this side here, little cams to rotate. Every time a, a cam rotates, it makes or breaks a contact, which represents a lamp on the traffic signal. So by having the um, fingers of the cam installed, it pushes the contact away and where the cam is broken out, it engages. So you can watch these little um, contacts get pushed away or released to make contact. And that causes the different color changes. The rest of this panel inside has to do with transfer relays. Show you how that works. Many cities made use of multiple dials when the uh, traffic flow would change for like a shower and such. And so what would happen is either, and usually it would happen by time clock and uh, sometimes manually or remotely from a central location, the uh, dials could be changed. I will show you the manual method here which is down here at the bottom, we've got a little dial selector. You can see there. And that, uh, depending on how it's set, you can set it for remote, which in that case, the dials are controlled remotely by a central office. Time switch, which would be normally mounted on the door, time switches to engage the dials. Or manual override, which is where we have three, one, and two. One is our default dial that we talked about. But by flipping over to two, we have now engaged a latching relay, which is what this left 
when the, the right is not used and there's a, a jumper plug in it. But the latching relay now is engaged, which means it has, uh, by hitting the, the two, switching over to two, it has engaged one of the, the latch on the relay. Now when the dial gets up here to zero, oops, pardon me, as it's about to do, you can see that, when it hits the key at the zero interval of time, it'll switch dials from one, and now dial two is going. So it keeps everything in sync. And it's a smooth transition from the one set of timing, which was the 60 second cycle, to now a 70 second cycle, of which the intervals can be changed or if, since it's a 70 second interval, it could be longer times for the, the green light, depending on which direction. And if I have a third dial, it could do the same, a third, third uh, set of sequences and intervals. So, again, these are fascinating units. The engineering involved is just uh, amazing how it served all these years with the uh, basic electromechanical uh, devices. And now with modern day electronics, many of these have been replaced with uh, solid state and uh, processors and all that. So, but anyway, so that's the tour of that. The only other things in this cabinet, uh, we have a couple of flash relays here and a flasher which is a mechanical flasher it's an older style you can see the little cam goes around and makes and breaks the flashing uh, you could manually these little switches at the bottom you could manually go to flash by clicking and this down you can see I'll do it again here you can see the uh, I guess you can't see it as well but a little click you're hearing are those relays engaging and so that turns the, the signal to flash. The other switch here is an auto hand switch and that would be used by police. There's a, a you can wire up here in the contacts uh, a manual switch and by flipping over to hand and you can control the sequence manually an officer. And we go back to auto. So you have the auto off and flash here, and uh, auto and hand here. And then this plug here at the bottom was typically where a time clock for the flashing red went. And we have one here, so the Torx. It's similar to an Intermatic or some of those timers, you can see, where you would push in and pull out the times you want it to go to flash. So then when, the, when it's engaged, hear that little relay there that causes it to go to flash. Now you can see those relays go when I turn it over. So. All in all a pretty amazing device. The only problems they would have with these, everything was pretty self-lubricating uh, and would last well, was sometimes cold weather would get to them. Get a little uh, sticky and cold. So some, some cabinets, they would uh, put it, mount a light bulb, usually on the left or right side, and that would create enough heat in the cabinet to keep things running. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tour of the Econolite electromechanical controller. As you can see, it's a pretty fascinating device. It's complex in one way and simple in another. Uh, and just fascinating how it was used so many years. Um, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Like and subscribe. And we'll catch you next time on my channel here.